Hello everyone and welcome back to Modded Minecraft. So we are back on the FTOG server for a little bit more of Avant 3. And since the end of the last episode, I've been busy over here working on the ore generation, or sorry, the ore processing. And in particular, trying to make it work a little bit faster because it was quite slow. And there's been a few bottlenecks, mainly I didn't want to do that. Hopefully I haven't messed that up too much. Mainly on the purification chamber. So that's had, that's quite slow. And that's not too bad. We're running out of oxygen quite a lot. So anyway, what I've done is I've added in a load of speed upgrades and also a load of the energy upgrades. And if I just show you, they are pretty easy to make. So the speed upgrades is literally just some of the enriched alloy, a bit of osmium dust and some glass, and that's any kind of glass. And then pretty similar with the energy upgrades, just go into that. And yeah, so it just requires the same thing, but a little bit of uh, a little bit of gold dust. And the problem with that is that's all well and good that it's it's increasing all of our production of stuff and it's speeding the throughput a little bit and bearing in mind I haven't put an awful lot of these speed upgrades I think in here if I just double check I've only actually put three out of the eight possible and this can go up to 10 times if you put in the full eight it will go up to 10 times effect the problem is that it now uses a, an absolutely huge amount of energy and in order to try to mitigate this, what I've done is I've created a few of the, or four in fact, of the power cells, two of the advanced and two of just the, the basic. And I'm going to have to upgrade those further. And I've also created an advanced energy cube and replaced all of the Ender IO conduits with the ultimate universal cable from Mechanism. And again, I'll just quickly show you the the crafting recipes for those. So the ultimate cable is pretty easy. It's all very, very tiered. And if we can just find it, the ultimate universal cable. So yeah, so you need one of these atomic alloys, which we've made before, surrounded by eight of the elite, which is eight advanced around a reinforced alloy, which is eight basic around an enriched alloy. And then the basic is just a bit of steel and a bit of redstone. And the energy cube, Again, I think that was the ultimate that we've got there. I oh, know it was an advanced. I didn't quite go for the for the ultimate. So if we just go through here to the advanced, that's just literally a little bit more osmium, some more of the enriched alloy, a couple of energy tablets, and then one of these basics, which all pretty basic stuff, just some more of that around a, a steel casing. And then the power cells... I didn't even know these existed, to be honest, until I, I sort of started hunting around for sort of wireless mechanism power transfer. Basically, these you can't use this one. This is creative, but the the basic and the advanced power cell, literally the uh, the advanced is just some blocks of redstone, a basic one, and some of this infused diamond, which requires dimensional shards. Uses it is. A little bit expensive, I guess, but yeah, fairly easy to fairly easy for us to get all of, our, of those stuff, and it creates eight of those at a time. So you basically need to do that four times for for each one because you need four of these infused diamonds. So that's just eight of those around a diamond, and then the basic again, fairly simple, quite heavy on redstone. All of this, but yeah, you can see the recipe there. So we've got some diamonds, some prismarine shards, some emeralds, and a basic machine frame. And then in, inside of each one, that one of these is a power cell card, and again they're pretty they're pretty basic and standard to make a little bit more redstone, some paper, and some nuggets. And all you do is it's very very similar actually to the way that the remote um, RF cards work, and that you have to link them. So on our solar array over here, so here's the basic one. We've got a card in here. We put the other card in here first and then that will give it the same ID number as this. And then you can go and plop it into the into the one over here. Now, the problem that we've got 
is that this is not creating power fast enough now. So, and it's the dimensional transceiver is the first to run out of power. And then this is kind of almost out. And I suspect that the advanced ones over this side, yeah, that this is pretty much depleted now. And obviously that's a really, really bad situation because all of our power in our actual house. So, I mean, that is literally everything. Our scanners, our remote storage, everything that we've got in there is going to gradually come to a grinding halt. So what we're going to need to do is the long and short of it is to upgrade this solar array. Now, I've gone ahead and I've made a few of the bits and pieces that, that we need. It's not the complete items because we need, we're going to go for tier two. And if that's not good enough, then we'll go to, to tier three. But we're going to need some bits and pieces for the tier three if we have to make that that we haven't got yet. And it requires another machine basically to move that forward. But we'll cover that if we if we come to it. But to make this, we're basically going to need to say turn those all into tier two. So if we go into again into hardened stone, if I can spell it, hardened stone, and yeah, there we go. So we want the tier two structure block. So that's basically the tier ones, and each one of those is going to require two diamonds and some redstone. And in order to do this, this basically requires, say, the tier two stone. It's going to require a tier two controller. And it's going to require this to be increased from three um, by three to a five by five. So I'm going to start off by taking all of these stones or the, the structure blocks off of here. And obviously, this means that we're now going to be creating no power whatsoever while this is happening. So if I need anything, I'm just going to have to go and manually grab it from the, the storage modules inside and craft it manually, which is a bit of a pain. But this is what happens, I guess, when you're just over reliant on one power source. And then we'll grab the solar cells that we need and just say, put those on there. So that will now become a five by five, so that's that side, and that will make it a four by four. And I don't think I've quite made enough of these. So let's see, what have we got? We've got five there. If I know, that's fine. No, that's, that has actually become five by five. And then, as I say, we're then going to need so basically five, ten, twenty plus the corner ones. Uh, so that will be 24 in total of the hardened stone. And I'm hoping that we've got enough power in our car just to be able to, say, get that together. So let's see. Fingers crossed that we have. And it's saying that we haven't got enough diamonds, which I'm quite surprised about. Have I stored some of my diamonds in my bag Maybe because I did think that I had some. That's no worries. We can we can nip over to the house actually, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we've got uh, sufficient of the agricultural expansion stuff to make the diamonds that we need. So yeah, we've got plenty of that. So let's just grab a whole load of that, and that certainly wasn't what I wanted to do. So we'll just drop off actually into our storage, the speed upgrades for now. And then if we just go in here and change that to diamond, like so, and we can see that we can make it with that. So we should be able to just get some of that together. So that's made us 48 diamonds. And hopefully that will be just the right amount because we need 24 of those stones. I think it is actually hardened. I'm having trouble typing tonight, clearly. So the tier two structure blocks, in fact, I needed to go through here. And there we go. 
click that in and hopefully one, two, three. Oh, we've just run out of the tier one structure blocks because I had them all in here. That's fine. We'll just grab those out and another one of those 24. Right, there we go. There's 24 of those, so we can go and pop those around the outside. And I think the the modifier cores, I think they still remain the same, hopefully. Um, I might need to go and have a quick checkup on that because I'm not 100% sure. Well, I guess we'll see if it's right or wrong, if it's going to create any power or not. But let's put these all the way around the outside. And as I say, this really wasn't what I was uh, planning to do today. I was kind of hoping to get back on to a bit more building, but yeah, this had to be done. Otherwise, as I say, everything would have come to an absolute grinding halt. And yeah, so that has completely run out of power now. So pretty much everything is going to have stopped. And the last thing then, I think... That we need to do is to update this solar panel controller so i'm not sure that we need to do anything more with the the modifier core but we're we are about to find out so if we go into here and put in solar so the tier two yeah it's going to require one of the solar cells two of the tier ones and some more diamonds that's a lot of diamond there i guess We've got, ah, okay, so we've got the four diamonds there already and we've already got the other tier one. So all we need to do then, hopefully, is grab out this tier one here. And I think, fingers crossed, that we should be in pretty good shape just to craft this together. So let's go for that. In fact, let's do it the right way. Through the storage tablet and like so. Yeah, and there we go. So there is our tier two. Let's pop that back up there. And let's just see if that is actually doing anything, which it isn't currently. So I think what we need to do is we need to grab the digital guide and let's say I quite can't quite remember where I stored that currently. Hopefully it's in our system somewhere. So if we just put in digital digital, digital guide, oh, there we go. So there it is. Let's have a quick look and see. So solar array. And what do we want? Let's go forward there. Ah, so according to this, the... We only need four modifier cores still, and that's going to create, yeah, that's definitely creating more energy than the one that we currently got. So that should definitely sort our problems out there. But what I'm concerned about, this, this isn't, so we've used 24 structure blocks. Yeah, fine. We've used... 25 solar cells I'm kind of now wondering to myself why this isn't actually why this isn't actually filling up with any energy why it's not working so they are definitely tier twos and this is very very odd as to why this wouldn't work don't remember that I had to do anything else to it. Let's just go back to the beginning of this. So it's a multi-block generator generates sun. Any block above any of the solar cells must allow sight light through. That's fine. Um not worried about these modifiers here. And yeah I can't see any reason whatsoever why this wouldn't be working i think potentially what we need to do 
It may be working, but it may be draining the power so fast that we can't actually see it. So if we just drop back into here, ah, there we go. So that is actually, yeah, that is actually fine. So it has filled up with power. I think the problem, potentially the problem with this is that because everything was drained with power, it just kind of looked like this wasn't working. But yeah, okay, fine. I can see that this is actually filling up with power over both sides now. And that, yeah, and this is starting to. So yeah, I was just a little bit impatient. So that is absolutely fine. As I say, the the next the next level up, the tier three, requires the uh well, it requires tier three structure blocks for a start off. And uh, we would require some extra modifier cores for that, but it also requires the tier three controller. And if we just go and try to find that tier three controller, it actually requires this item called Mika or Mika. I'm not exactly sure how you would say that, but it's only it's only you can only get it through the uh, the void resource miner. So which is something we haven't set up yet and i'm not overly sure how difficult that would be to put together potentially not that need a bit of gold some end stone so we've got we've got all of that the clear glass yeah that'd be fine lens a bit more clear glass and was it actually that one was i looking at the was i looking at the wrong one there um <laughs> I'm losing the plot fast. Let's go back to solar array and in fact no, let's go through let's go through here. So the yeah, tier three, the void resource miner. Yeah, I was looking at the right one, void re resource miner. And then a laser core. Okay, so it's not it's not hugely difficult to make that, but yeah, it's not something I plan to do just yet. And as I say, I think this seems to be working just fine. It will do if it stops raining. And as I say, we're definitely, definitely getting the power in here now. I say that is all that is all filled up. Uh, just go and check in the house because the capacitor banks, they were pretty much all empty. Which is kind of telling me that really, yeah, so that's that is now that is now filling up at a pretty at a pretty good rate of nuts. So say that was all completely empty. We could probably do with uh, with upgrading these as well, to be honest, to um to something a bit beyond the basic because you can obviously store a lot more if we just go into capacitor. So we're using the say the basic at the moment. Even if we had just the normal capacitors, they they would store us five million RF compared to these, which is just one million. And if we can get to the to the vibrant, then yeah, that's twenty five million. The problem with this is it uses a lot of resources, a lot of these octadic capacitors, which are quite a pain to make. And yeah, so each one of those requires four octadic capacitors and it also requires a vibrant crystal. So obviously we're going to need a lot more of this vibrant alloy. But yeah, that's fine. I guess that's something for uh, for a future episode anyway to, uh, or I might even get it done in, in between episodes because it is, there's nothing complicated there. It's just a case of just grinding it all. So I have still been using the alloy smelter and the and the sag mill, by the way, just for random processing of ores because of how slow uh, this whole setup was. So it's great that it, it produces, you know, say four times the ore, but it's not particularly quick at doing it. So now this is all running again. I'll just sort of show you that what we're sort of dealing with here, that for each one of these that it processes you can see how slow it is going through it and it's taken an absolute age just i mean it's on tin now but if i show you from this is still from the last episode 
this is all of the stuff just from that one run that we've still that we've still got a process so there's just loads and loads and obviously while that's all sitting in there that is resources that i haven't got readily available for me in my inventory so yeah that is pretty much it for that other than to say where i've got at the moment i don't know how much uh, of these upgrades i've got sort of for for whatever i'm gonna make a load more of these i want to get this up so it's basically got the maximum amount of upgrades in each and just see if we can get this actually running at, at full speed so that we're getting through this lot at a at a more reasonable rate and yeah we'll see i'll see how much the power can how much the power can handle so i guess the last thing to say about this really is why i set this up like this in the first place before i discovered that i hadn't got enough power was i decided to replace the endorio pipes with the uh with the universal cable for mechanism and the dimensional transceiver just wasn't connecting to the pipe no, no matter which way i tried to configure it so but it will connect with one of the advanced energy cubes and yeah so that's how it pretty much started off but obviously we subsequently discovered that we weren't getting power fast enough from this thing anyway which kind of surprised me really because I, I don't know where i saw it but i i did think that this outputted at, at quite a decent rate but even the basic power cell seemed to to work a little bit faster but yeah it's uh it's fine so i haven't i haven't checked it out it might have just been the fact that the solar array i obviously you saw i connected these directly to it and i hadn't done that before so basically everything uh power wise my base is running off of was running off of dimensional transceivers on that one channel so it could just be purely that i'd overloaded that i'd overloaded that but but yeah that's fine so as i say in between episodes i'm going to get this up and running so that it's a little bit faster and we've got a few minutes so i might actually just nip in here and and try and get some of these uh capacitors a little bit upgraded just so that if we run out of power again or if there's a, a similar situation in the future particularly let's say when we start to add some more of the environmental tech stuff which i have already heard is pretty power hungry that we at least get a little bit of grace time before this all starts running out of, of power in here and as i say and hopefully using the the new sort of improved power grid that we can do this pretty quickly so let's just go into into this and see how quickly we can get this together so we already know that we need those now i'm fairly sure actually before i start making those let's just have a quick look and see capacitor oh dear me capacitor let's see how many of those we've got yeah so we've got actually a bunch of the basics and we've got one of the double as well already so that is pretty helpful and i'm going to assume that i can just sort of update these one at a time that it's not going to mess with the sort of like multi-block i guess we'll find out so let's uh let's go and make a bunch of these then so we need to first of all make some more of the double layer and we make eight of those okay so the energetic alloy is going to become a bit of an issue there and that's going to not allow us to make an awful lot of these in fact yeah we can make four which means that we can make potentially one of these i think we're going to be missing the uh yeah we're going to be missing the vibrant crystal so in order to make the the vibrant crystal i think we're potentially going to have to go away and make some more of the vibrant alloy so yeah i'm going to go away 
I'm going to make a load more of both the energetic alloy and the vibrant alloy, and then I'll be back and we can we can throw a few of these things together and get that situation sorted out. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so a little bit of time later, and yeah, hopefully we've got together the bits and pieces that we need for this. So let's just grab out all of those because we're going to use those as part of the process. And I've got to admit, I didn't quite expect that we would use up all of our space with that, but of course they don't go together. So what we're going to do is we've got enough to make just directly out of the materials for in this way. And then because we've got some basic capacitors, we can make another another one this way. So that will give us our five in total like we had before with the basics. And in order to do it this way, basically, you use two of the normal capacitor banks with the double layer capacitor and some energy. So we should just be able to make one, two of those. And then we can combine that together to make one of those. Sorry, even one of those like so. So there's our first vibrant capacitor. And then again, if we do this, we should I've done my sums correctly, be able to make four in that way, which we have, excellent. So now we can go and pop those back down again. So it's one, two, and we'll use our wrench, turn that round. Hopefully, if I can get hold of my wrench. Like so, why is that not wanting to Which is a little bit weird. Fine. Well, um, let's hopefully that corrects itself. I don't see why it wouldn't. And then, yeah, so the final one, and we've got one of the basic capacitors left. So we should just be able to, I was hoping, just be able to put that in. which yeah there we go like so and they are all beginning to fill up now so we've got 125 million space worth of arrow so that's going to take a little while to fill up and again if we take our wrench and um, we can just get this so that it's showing the inputs and outputs that's so going to take a little while then to fill up but what that does mean is if we have another outage of power because we're using up all of our available power from the solar generator oh sorry from the solar array then we'll have a little bit of a buffer before we actually run out and let's just check how things are doing up here so that's fine we don't seem to be actually be having any issues there at the moment and that's fine as well so that is I think that's going to be it actually. I'm going to try say try for once just to keep an episode within a reasonable time frame and definitely definitely in the next episode we're going to do what we said we were going to do two episodes ago and that's to get the rest of the bits and pieces out here done with the fountain and the paths and that. So, I hope you've liked the episode and I hope you've got something out of it. It's certainly been a bit of a learning curve for me in terms of the power requirements for this and how you go about getting it all sort of set up and running smoothly. And obviously, if you've liked the video, then please, please, please do drop us a like because as I say that is always helpful. And as always, guys, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.